motivators if you're new oh my gosh thank you so much for stopping in and if you're returning thank you because today we're going to be talking about a little well actually big that's what she said <laughs> story which is jacqueline hill and the midas touch Now, I know that when all these controversies were like popping up, I was like, huh, this kind of reminds me of the story of King Midas and the Golden Touch. Um, but let's go in of why I'm so interested. First of all, I used to be a really kind of big fan of Jaclyn Hill because when I first started like diving into makeup, it was actually after high school. And of course, when I go on YouTube, the first like how to or like thing that I looked up, Jaclyn Hill popped up. And one can say that I was like enchanted or dare I say, kind of bewitched by Jaclyn Hill and like the way she spoke and the way she um, applied makeup. And no one can take away that she puts on really good makeup not gonna lie um but then i started to notice things as people and if you're tuning in probably noticed many things that happened along the way that totally just turned me off from her and all her brands and we're gonna go through that timeline it took a while but the timeline hopefully i have it so like well thought out it's gonna be long but you can see, you will be able to see what I'm talking about of all the things that have come out or were coming out that we kind of turned a blind eye to or didn't see it as a pattern because it was so well hidden and maybe it didn't pop up on your feed. But here we go. In order to know why I think that Jaclyn Hill and King Midas are kind of the same, um, I guess a little story, we got to refresh your memory. I'll be reading like i don't know like a librarian so once upon a time in ancient greece there lived a king named midas now if i go through this story and it doesn't sound the same okay there's many different stories but i'm gonna try to shorten this out and so he was always dissatisfied and unhappy he was always greedy for more wealth and wished he had more gold in his possession one day as he was counting gold coins and admiring his treasure room a wise Greek god appeared before him who offered the king a wish for some of his good deeds. Without wasting t any time, King Midas quickly wished that everything that he touched should turn to gold. The Greek god granted his wish. He went to touch an apple tree, boom, turned to gold. He started touching things around the house, you know, his big old mansion, and it turned to gold. But then he started to get hungry, and he turned his palace to eat into gold and everything he was trying to eat started to turn to gold um, and that was when he became pretty starving i know us you know and me i get hangry he was disappointed that he could not eat anything because whatever he touched turned into gold instantly and now you can see how that's a problem seeing him frustrated in trouble he had a daughter named money gold and she came and tried to comfort him but to his dismay, even his daughter turned to gold as he touched her. In no time, he realized his greed was his biggest mistake ever and begged the great God to take back the wish. If you were in school and you read this story, you were probably asked by the teacher or given a pop quiz. There's some answers that the teacher probably would have been like, yes, this person was paying attention. There are many things in life that are more precious than gold. This was a cautionary tale about the dangers of greed. And then my favorite short and sweet one that I found online was, one should never be greedy in life because the wish of being greedy does not give fruitful returns in the future. Wow. And I felt like after seeing all this, that was a really good little insight of what's going on with Jaclyn Hill. Jaclyn Hill, now we know as Jaclyn Tory grew up in illinois on a farm her family and her moved to florida it's not clear when they moved but they moved and they had owned a farm and i would say they were 
pretty well off. So Jaclyn Hill, in my opinion, came from money. Jaclyn Hill was homeschooled during her childhood and then she attended college where she wanted to be in photography but dropped out her freshman year. She became a freelance makeup artist. She worked at MAC Cosmetics and I found the earliest article saying that she worked at the MAC store from 2012 to 2013. She began to work for various fashion designers and celebrities. The earliest video I found was in 2011 in December and that video was titled Bronze Smoky Eye. Okay. Now the earliest controversy I have on here is he had a meet and greet in Florida and the people that were there were saying that she was being dismissive and rude and that was a whole big uproar. Then Jaclyn Hill had a collaboration with Sigma Beauty to make Jaclyn Hill favorites the brush set and it became the best seller during that time. Now for the controversy that followed that, the rumor that had started Cole Guerrero was a top seller of Sigma Beauty and did not receive a collab. And she was friends with Jacqueline during that time. You can pause and read the rumor that she stole the deal from Nicole Guerrero. The video of Jacqueline and her like being friends on camera and then quickly just like fell off the face of the earth. I don't know what happened. Nicole Guerrero never spoke out about this, which I wonder if we'll see that soon. All right, so in 2015, Jacqueline collaborated with Morphe Cosmetics, creating a palette of her favorite Morphe eyeshadows. And, and in 2015, she had a collection with Gerard Cosmetics with Lippies, Rose Hill, 1995, Buttercup, and Buttercream. That's what I could find. And then what follows in 2015, she released the Becca and Jacqueline collaboration for a highlighter called Champagne Pop. Now, Champagne Pop was like, I remember hearing that name. I think at the time that I did not buy this, but something she touched turned to gold. So they sold 20,000 units on Becca only that sold out in less than 90 minutes. And at Sephora, Sephora reports that 25,000 units of Champagne Pop was sold within 20 minutes of releasing, breaking sell records. Jen from Jen Gerard, the CEO, has given us information of things that happened during that time. I don't know how Jacqueline did it, but she was rounding up CEOs from different brands like Makeup Geek, Jen Gerard, Morphe, and I don't know who else, but she was rounding them up and these people were so kind to try to, I guess, make her own brand. And essentially they were trying to help someone else be a competitor in a business standpoint. In my opinion, Marlena and Jen sound very genuine and sweet based on like me viewing them on YouTube and then the recent podcast, The Sesh, that they were on. They genuinely wanted to help a fellow woman in the makeup industry achieve her dreams. Now, it amazes me how much help they were willing to give Jaclyn Hill. And it was in 2015, but it took many years for her to actually launch a makeup brand that was her own, eh, quotation marks, that we will later find out why. These quotation marks, right? So, all right, keep that in mind. All this was happening behind the scenes. So she gathered a bunch of CEOs. She was having many collabs. And during that time, in May, a Snapchat was taken by Manny MUA, who was, I think, living with Jen at the time, according to um, the Snapchats taken and what Jen has been saying. Took a Snapchat of Jen responding to a video by Karina Kaboom here on YouTube because she was talking badly about Gerard Cosmetics and she was cussing and just kind of doing the most in my opinion doing the most and jen i felt innocently said well she's just being ugly or she's she's just ugly so jen gerard got backlash because people were saying that she was talking about karina kaboom's appearance jen meant that it was like her soul like how she acted her attitude that was ugly she was not talking about her appearance and i'm inclined to believe her because I could see on there we're like, man, she's just making fun of my brand just to make fun of it because it jump-started Karina Kaboom's drama channel. 
and I think she wanted this to happen so that it could catapult her to many views, many subs, basically doing this just to get up on YouTube. And during that time, because of this collab and um, this controversy, Jen in the recent podcast said that Jacqueline continued to ask her industry information and did not have an issue, did not give Jen an indication that their friendship or business relationship would be affected. Here's the thing things were there was red flags going off and i recommend going to that podcast and listening to marlena to jen and, and there was another woman who came forward and gave us information on something jacqueline hill morphe did that was utterly disgusting in my opinion on july 31st 2015 where jacqueline was asking jen to give her two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, she knew that these lips lippies were bestsellers jen thought that was a extortion tactic because before that email jacqueline wanted her to make an apology video for karina kaboom and jen said like why would i apologize and i would be saying the same thing like if i don't mean it why am i gonna make a video like why you didn't have a problem until recently and jen did say on the podcast she thinks it's because Jacqueline was coming under fire for not disclosing affiliate links now I found affiliate links seriously way early on during her very first videos affiliate links no disclosure no disclosures and so she was coming under fire recently I guess people started to see that more and more and Jen tried to communicate with her over the phone. Jacqueline refused to communicate over the phone with Jen during the time and it was only email or her mom would respond and she, Jen genuinely wanted to know why would I need to give you $250,000? Me too girl. I want to know because she did take all her likeness down, everything and then that email occurred. In 2016, Jacqueline released a limited edition gem encrusted makeup brush set with morphe in may 2016 another collection with becca cosmetics and that was the champagne pop like a full collection and it earned 3.5 million in sales during its first day her collaboration with becca was reported to have sold 10.7 million like total so during that time there was supposed to be an eyeshadow palette and there was a video that's on youtube that had her saying that she picked everything she had so much like she created all the shades in there then people were saying that the palette literally had there was something wrong with the palette the pigmentation of the shadows everything then jacqueline came and said well she only collabed on one of those Yes, so she threw Becca Cosmetics under the bus for shades that she approved and had no issue saying that she created them until somebody found an issue and they were just low quality eyeshadows. That's when she threw Becca Cosmetics under the bus and said that they used not their original factory but a China factory. That's what was quoted and it was pulled out. And I've never heard about that again. And during the same time, she was supposed to have another collab, but with Makeup Geek, Marlena Stell, a very close friend, supposedly a close friend. And Marlena Stell was giving her factories uh, information on what to do to start your own company because she thought she was helping a fellow woman in the makeup industry. Now, there are many emails that were leaked out that show the exchange between a Makeup Geek employee and Jaclyn Hill. And let me say, it was just back and forth. If you're trying to get this collab going, it took a very long time for Jaclyn Hill to respond. But she did, she did approve shades, talking as if, you know, she was going through with this collab. Now, because unfortunately, Marlena Stell, the one mistake she did have was that I think she was too trusting um, and a good person to try to help a fellow woman in the beauty industry, but to her own demise. Now, Jacqueline Hill never signed the contract and in the emails, the employee did insist to sign the contract, but she never did. And my guess is because she had a collab with Morphe in the works and then she had the collab with Becca Cosmetics 
and Make of Geek was put on the burner. So Jaclyn Hill did not go through with the collab, even though she did in the emails approve Shays, continued to talk like nothing was wrong, and kept a front to Marlena that she could never pull out of this collaboration. So Marlena said that in 2016, 4 million loss, over a 4 million loss because of this collab that never went through and she had to pull the plug because eyeshadows were going to expire and Jacqueline just couldn't come through. And I believe she picked Morphe over her own friend. She ordered $1 million worth of products already and the retail revenue from that was going to be $4.5 million. That was a huge, huge loss for Makeup Geek. And they took that on the chin. And Marlena had to learn a lesson that even with friends, family, or even strangers, always have a contract. And in 2017, Jacqueline Hill and the Morphe palette, the original, which I have right here. Actually, this was a second buy. Let me say, after trying Indie Beauty, this was subpar. Didn't have a mirror. Quality is subpar compared to the world of indie makeup, which I have now come to love a little bit more than the mainstream makeup, like Glaminatrix, Gourmandy Girls, Unearthly, um, many other indie cosmetics that now I'm like, I don't even use these anymore. The quality is not as good as quality that we're seeing now. And all these products sold out quickly. So, so far, all the products she's been selling have been selling out quickly, sold out, just banking in some big numbers. Now this palette, the first controversy with this palette started off with a cake being leaked from a cake factory who had leaked out the colors of a palette cake and morphe and jacqueline were saying no 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 that is not the colors that we're going to have in our palette because people did not like the colors turns out the cake was quite a pretty good depiction of the color store inside so why lie about that i know it leaked but like it's going to be exactly the same color palette as that obviously is going to have shades that are different off it's hard to get something exact on a cake even with that controversy even with it being almost exactly like the cake that baby sold out september 2017 there was supposed to be a kathleen lights and jacqueline hill collab it was long waited um until kathleen lights while playing a game at jacqueline hill's house said the n-word and the husband quickly said oh don't post that don't post that jacqueline hill came under fire because she still posted it and she was called a snake and shady On august 14 2018 she released her vault collection and i remember seeing this video and this video was saying that from this palette there was other shades that did not make it to this palette and she wanted to put it into little smaller palettes so in my head when i first watched that i was like so you're saying like the shades that weren't good enough you're gonna sell it to us that's literally what i thought those palettes quickly sold out i remember people were trying to get them everything like that i no i ever got them i was like wait did i get them no i have actually the volume one and i have volume two i have volume one volume two of jacqueline hill and i think i got brushes too like I have that stuff, but I never use it now. There's no point. I just don't feel good as a used to be fan. Now, what happened? A lot happened because the first video I saw was actually, hopefully I say her name right, Jackie Aina, and she was using one of her palettes. We're not talking about yellow. I'm not like that, but you know what? On the bare side, on my bare skin, it actually doesn't look bad. Okay, because either way, I need to fix this because I gotta go. Okay, that's what you should do anyway oh this is really bugging me this is really bugging me you know what i may just have to like like and right away i saw the issue patchy wasn't blending well they halted the release in a short amount of time saying that they were going to reformulate it and then when people were questioning the timeline because to get it from here to china or to get all these thousands and thousands of pallets get them take it out of there and reformulate it that takes a lot of time 
and the pans were glued to the palette. Then they came out that they actually pressed them differently. And then she released a video of her swatching a mini palette saying she doesn't know she doesn't know what's going on. And that video was titled Let's Talk. This isn't even close to being all of it. And these stacks are much higher than the camera is actually showing them to be. They come much further down. I am dedicated to swatching these vaults and figuring out the issue. It is an embarrassment for me to have inconsistencies in a product that I have spent so much time and put so much heart into. And that is not because of money or my bank account or me not being able to buy a new Birkin. That is because of my subscribers. You guys, <laughs> I've always been a happy girl, but being able to get on camera and connect with you guys. And she's in a hoodie. Why is everybody that does an apology video like in a hoodie? Seriously, gray hoodie. So I remember seeing that video too. She had a whole stack of all these passing. I don't know. They're blending well. Swatching on the arm is not going to tell you anything. Using it will. But already a little lie. Not a little lie. It was a big lie. Big lie of the time it took to take every palette. How can you get all the palettes? almost virtually impossible because they were in some stores to get all the palettes and repress them. Now, in the September 25th, 2018, Becca Cosmetics sued Morphe over the collab, the Vault Collection, because on the Vault Collection, the little palettes, there was a circle and I think it had like Jaclyn Hill's name and it like dispersed, like little dots that dispersed out. Now, if I find that photo, it looks just like the Becca art and then now Morphe has it and it sounds like Jacqueline was going to have this for her palette but because of the issue and it was taken she's like oh well let me run with this idea and give it to Morphe because I really liked that packaging I don't think you can do that but anyways here we go they were sued now I don't know what happened there Maybe they got a payout to keep it hush hush because I don't even remember hearing about that. So they were sued for stealing art packaging. And clearly, they look pretty similar. Okay, a collaboration with Morphe again and release brushes and Eye Master Collection, the Face Master Collection, and the Master Collection. And they were all brushes. Now, from a recent podcast, The Sesh again. We come to now find out that there was another lawsuit by a Venezuelan named Gabby, and it says Gabby Ross Makeup. She actually has the trademark for the name The Face Master. And many celebrities use this. Denisa Myricks, Makeup by Mario, many celebrities. And I've never heard, unfortunately, I've never heard of this makeup brand or Gabby's story um, because she was trying to handle it legally and didn't want drama or attention towards that issue so she sued them she sued morphe and of course because of that name i'm pretty sure jacqueline knew and linda linda morphe they knew that they were being sued for that name the face master so basically the morphe lawyers came back or maybe Jacqueline's lawyers. I don't know. We would have to deep dive into that. That's a separate thing. That's for law too. But maybe I can be a law too. Anyways, so the lawyers told her, and this is disgusting. Que asco. So disgusting. They said, well, basically, sue us. And she's small. She was a small brand, you know, somebody who could not spend thousands and thousands of dollars because if you don't know suing someone is not going to take just a couple days and even if someone stole your trademark it takes time for it to process in the courts and then to have it taken off and that's thousands and thousands of dollars time and some people don't have that luxury they said basically sue us they knew that she didn't have you know time or even probably that much money to outlast them sometimes these corporations do that they sue you knowing that you cannot outlast them in money and time and that's what they said and under her advisement of her lawyers she said well i'll accept because it was her trademark i'll accept the minimum payment for each item that sold with the face master they declined 
They made so much money, had so much money, and couldn't even get this Venezuelan woman, a Latina, the time or day. And that really takes me off. As a fellow Latina, it, it made me just like hearing her story. I recommend you hear her story. You know, and she even apologized for not knowing English that well um, and saying, you know, she came from Venezuela. They had to flee. They had to come here. And that was her dream. And she was, you know, in love with the tools of makeup and made this for herself. And it was a bestseller. And to have that stripped away, because when you search up Face Master, now it pops up Morphe and Jacqueline's collab. And she just wanted the minimum and even they couldn't give her that and that was never brought up i never heard that story and i would have never known but i'm glad i know now um because i want to purchase that brush it looks beautiful and she seemed like a really beautiful person and she was about to cry telling this story and basically they said sue us then sue us and so she could not she could not go through with that and because of that even though she had a trademark they still used it. They still use her trademark. And that is also another lesson. Like, even when you get a trademark, you have to defend it. And usually these big corporations try to bully smaller creators, corporations, businesses. And I hate that. 2019, May 23rd, Jacqueline published a YouTube video announcing the launch of Jacqueline Cosmetics with 20 nude lipsticks. And this section of the video is known as the lipstick gate controversy. So the first video I saw of what was going on with these lippies was actually Raw Beauty Christie's video. I'm not sure if this is hair, if this is mold, it does look like hair bothersome. There's hair in multiple of them. Oh my God. And in that video, I was like, what the heck? I was trying to give Jacqueline the benefit of the doubt. Oh man, there's not gonna be another drama, something like that. But when I saw that video and there was hairs, holes, and then Robbie and Christy did another video where she had a microscope and was looking through it. And then there was other people that were getting their PR. And oh, okay, the packaging looked beautiful, but it was kind of wasteful too, but it looked beautiful, right? And then even the PR people, because sometimes PR is a little bit better than what you're getting. I don't know why it should be the same, but in some cosmetics or beauty lines, the, the PR is supposed to be better. Well, this PR was definitely, it shouldn't have gone out. There was hair, there was balled up things. God knows what was in them. Sold out, I found photos where there was hair, bubbles, gritty texture, even claims of mold. And now she was known as the hairy lipstick girl. And somebody first started complaining on Twitter. Actually, Jacqueline made a snarky remark and said something about her lips or basically like her lips were crusty only to find out that this person was not saying this for attention. It was true. In June 12, 2019, she made a video, My Lipsticks. In that video, she attempted to rectify the situation try to show papers now papers that now we find out um that morphe actually purchased her lipsticks with that paper it was trying to i don't know if she was trying to do it on purpose but it was blacked out but not really blacked out because it said you could clearly see where it said morphe and then there was a paper that was something approved i couldn't find it um approve like the comparison that now people in the industry are like that approval for fda something is not a thing so she basically i don't know what she did went on canva and made her own documents probably you know what i found suspicious is when i looked everywhere i could not find these documents that she had forged um because that was what everybody was saying they approved the documents to be forged and look at the video all blurred out that is so suspicious but now they have been proven to be false documents and um marlena even said that uh makeup geek as well as jen gerard now in that video too i watched and i was like huh, -uh. how could a lab she said fuzzy gloves were you how could a lab use fuzzy gloves with things that you don't want lint in them or hair in them 
2019, I saw another article where Jacqueline made a statement. The first launch sucked, but everybody deserves a second chance. That was the first time I've ever done anything where it was me, my team, my brand, and it wasn't a collaboration and it did not go how it was planned to go. If people are upset about what happened the first time around and they don't want to buy this collection, I totally understand, but I'm going to keep going and proving myself. We'll get to that. November 2019, Jacqueline Cosmetics released a limited edition Jacqueline Cosmetics Holiday Collection. I actually called the number that was provided because it seemed like this holiday collection was a tester to me. I thought really in my head, I was like, hmm, this is a tester to see if people are still willing to buy her products because it sold out literally in a second. That means they had hardly any inventory. Call that number and it was, it was just so weird. Like, oh, it sold out. Oh, okay. Like, I forgot. It, and it was somebody with a British accent. I was like, huh, that is weird. I just called to see what was the response when I said, well, it's not working because it wasn't working online. I think I was trying to see if I could purchase that to review. And it just didn't work out. Then they said, call this number because I think the page was loading or something like that. And I just thought it was weird. In February 2020, she faced criticism after posting a TikTok where she claimed she had gained weight during COVID-19 pandemic. Her viewers did not like that. They thought she was promoting fatophobia. Now, I hate, okay, I'm a plus size girl. And I hate when people that are like Jacqueline size are, I'm fat. no, you're beautiful, okay? And I'm beautiful and you're not even plus size. So when she said, I'm like, oh my, I feel like after all these incidences, like the whole ceiling clap is like stuff she throws out there to make us feel bad. Is That's my humble opinion. <laughs> I can have one. Then February 13th, we have Jaclyn Hill and the Morphe Volume 2 palette, which I have right here. Almost a bunch of the same shades all right here. I know. I shouldn't have got it. I know. And it's weird because she had her Jaclyn Hill or Jaclyn Cosmetics and then still had a collaboration with Morphe for a second palette. Instead of releasing that palette in her actual brand. And the controversy that followed volume two was that I don't know why she would say it. I don't know if she knew that the formula had changed and just wanted to mention it so that we could look it up. Easy. Just go to where this one is like like everything is vibrant in this one and just so freaking pigmented so this is the same loved formula as the jacqueline hill original palette and but i remember seeing jen loves reviews here on youtube look up the ingredients and the ingredients that jacqueline said oh it's the same formula as the first palette were not the same Seriously, I will link uh, Jen's video down below because she does comparisons, watches, and just deep dives um, into this oddly thing that she kind of stumbled upon because a family member had purchased the Jaclyn Hill palette and she had a Jaclyn Hill palette, but it happened to be like the original um, and it just did not have the same quality so then jen starts to question well what's going on even got emails like sent she, well she didn't get them she sent emails to morphe to say hey what's going on did y'all change the formula or what what is it all the emails she got said no 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 um only for her to find out later that she searched up all these ingredients on their website and for sure the formula did change um even the second volume it was a different formula not the original original you know the og um it had carmine in it and some people did not want carmine because that means that it was crushed beetles and it was not vegan what it's like this is not the same they felt different they swatched differently i was like something is going on here so so in short they are different. So this is the ingredient list that was posted on Morphe's website in 2017. And I don't have a screenshot of, from the Morphe website of this ingredient list, but I did double check it with a Temptalia post from 2017 when she reviewed the Morphe palette by Jaclyn Hill. Um, and then it launched the bronze and blush duo, her beaming light loose highlighters, which I saw great reviews on that. 
and it wasn't too much of a controversy just the packaging the packaging had like this big raised j on it and it was just hard to put into drawers and the 12th of 2021 Jacqueline relaunches her lipsticks like the shades the new lipsticks she started to launch in the first launch that was a major failure she launched them in liquid form along with lip liners and the only controversy i can think of was that the lippies were just not a good formula drying um and then in may 15th 2021 she released a video where she was defending herself and the description when i looked it up right away the description had please be kind to one another obviously i would think anyone would want to be kind to someone but i saw that as a manipulation because she was like trying to say oh all this stuff happened to me and i hope you know with the whole lipstick thing and it, and it really had affected her mental and she was just talking on there and i just felt like that was manipulation in order to buy more of her products let's not forget this launch but i felt like it was just out of place and kind of like old because nobody was doing this brightening anymore under the eyes and on june 4th 2021 bougie rogue collection with blush powders blush sticks luminizing blushes and lip cushions now i would just be like I, i'm obsessed with blush but i'm like man it's just like all of the same blushes it was nothing new um no controversy there there was nothing new really about the blushes and they weren't like cute shades and some of the shades looked like exactly the same why would i want different forms of that shade you know I just, after seeing uh, other stuff, I was not interested in things like this from Jacqueline. I was just following along like, hmm, is there something going to happen? Is there going to be another controversy? Yes. <laughs> so on July 2021, Jacqueline released a limited edition summer collection, which had liquid highlights, lip oils, putty highlighters, and cream bronzers. Now, those bronzers... I felt like I could wear every single one of those. So there was a lot of stir about the inclusivity of those bronzers. She could have made, like, if you don't have enough money, but I know she has the money, she could have made light, medium, deep, instead of almost all the same in the range of light, in my opinion. Then we have 2021 September, Becca Cosmetics closes during that time. Then in October 28th, 2021, Jacqueline announces her second new business, something about imminent.com and Jacqueline Roxanne Jewelry. Now I went to go look up what imminent.com was and you know what? I feel like I was confused by her video. Like what is imminent? So it's not yours, you're using this and it's a business website or for you to post different things and I'm pretty sure it's affiliate links that she can put on there and make money but without saying anything which I thought was weird because Jacqueline Roxanne Jewelry was on there and it's so I don't know it was just weird it was like an icky feeling of like okay she's using imminent why doesn't she just use Jacqueline Roxanne Jewelry.com why is it that and she was going to have other products on there. So I'm guessing she was making money off affiliated links of products that were on imminent.com for Jaclyn Hill. Wow. And it seemed and appeared that she struck gold again by having this jewelry line um, until there was just many comments and many tags of her just blatantly copying other designers work. It wasn't just inspired it was blatantly copying jewelry designs that were unique to these jewelry creators and brands then in april 2022 she launched lux legacy collection in a collaboration with her mom controversy on that is it was boring ashy just overall not a good i would say not a good launch and in june a canadian creator known as kaylin Nicholson, also known here on YouTube as Kaylin's Coffee Talk, commented on a post of the little sneak peek behind Jaclyn Hill's cozy brand, where she politely tried to make Jaclyn and her team aware of her brand of the same name. And in October 2022, 
Jacqueline launched Cozy, a comfort line. So Cozy and Coz were spelled the same. Kayla Nicholson had the brand All Things Coz where she was selling comfort things and it looked good, it looked great. And she did not trademark that name, unfortunately, because of the price, because of all that had to go into it. She never got around to doing the trademark. Now, Kaylin did say she did comment that. She even messaged them to get some type of response. Because once you see something like that happen when somebody's trying to use almost the same name and in the same realm as you like youtube here you know that can be a hit on your business because the first thing that they're going to think of is cozy and not all things coz they could get confused by that so she did try to reach out now it sounds like jacqueline and that and her team did not care and what i found interesting is that the sneak peek had cozy and it had a tm on it even though jacqueline hill never trademarked cozy so kaylin had to change her whole brand due to that so that she wouldn't have an issue and unfortunately that took a lot I'm pretty sure it took a lot of revenue to change everything, to start from scratch, basically. April 29th, she married her fiance, Jordan. And at the end of April 2022, Makeup Leak announced their closing. And that was due to various reasons. But I would say the most biggest reason is that huge loss of money that could have went into revamping this brand and i would say i kind of knew this was coming because it was dwindling down the talk of makeup geek 2 was dwindling down the things they were releasing were not interesting and i think it just had to do where she was trying to get rid of all the products she had from jacqueline hill kind of leading her on uh, all these products and she had to sell them somehow and figure that out and it must have been devastating in january 12 2023 Morphe files for bankruptcy and when you file for bankruptcy the courts request all papers all documents of your business and here's where the story gets juicy so everything is on the table and we come to find out which I did myself too I went to go look up the bankruptcy and bring up the papers and I find out that Jacqueline has never owned Jacqueline Cosmetics. The brand that is in Ulta, the brand that had these lipsticks come out, and the one that she said during her lipstick drop was a, I want everyone to buy and know that they're buying from a family owned business. It was never family owned. It was owned by Morphe, who then was bought by Forma brands who is now because of the bankruptcy owned by the many lenders that they owed so when all that happened i was like what also saw jen loves reviews to cover that and i was like still in shock like wow all this time everyone thought that even her close friends probably thought that only for actual documentation not my words not opinions facts on papers that state she is not the owner of Jacqueline Cosmetics. But she can get away with saying she's the owner because she owns that the name. The name. And she is known as a collaborator on paper. So who knows how much insight she had, but I know decisions, hmm, they're not ultimately hers. The earliest thing I saw that really did just put a nail in Jacqueline Hill's coffin for me is the documentation of her being snarky towards Kaylin, in my opinion. And that was February 24, 2023, a video called Let's Chat. And in that video, she's doing her makeup and then she's like looking at a brush from Benefit Cosmetics and like, oh, well, at least they trademarked it. Skin, TM, at least they trademarked it. <laughs> like come on Jacqueline read the room girl uh you know you know about all this and then you're gonna say that come on girl really because I know you've been watching those comments and know what's going on and you know tra the trademark thing it has to do with Caitlyn because Caitlyn didn't trademark it 
and then you thought okay well she she didn't try to mark it so i can just use it i'm pretty sure that's what you were thinking in my opinion like my opinion, i'm pretty sure she's like oh well she didn't try to mark it so i can use it and i don't care that's my opinion but she made the snarkiest comment and then goes later on oh i don't i don't feel like we should cancel i think she said jeffree star has a good lash curler really after all the stuff he did oh i'm sick of cancel culture leave mckay who McKayla on tiktok who lied about using mascara that made her lashes look so beautiful but it was fake falsies that she never disclosed so you're trying to say don't cancel oh leave them alone why because they're lying and because you're a liar so we need to leave them alone so that that can be the new norm i don't think so Michael made another video on august 4 2023 i'm closing my brands hmm full circle okay and in that video of closing my brands she says that she's closing down cozy and closing down jacqueline roxanne the jewelry okay the jewelry that she had the jewelry brand she doesn't say jacqueline cosmetics on purpose in my opinion because of legal reasons because she does not own it but then later on says oh it's my brand she's just playing this game with us she's playing this game with us in my opinion yeah in my opinion yes i have to keep saying that in my opinion for legal purposes <laughs> but she did that then she claimed that she didn't even know that youtube was profitable that she was just on there for the love of makeup okay even that kind of stuck out to me that comment a recent comment stuck out to me about the whole like i didn't even know youtube was profitable but i seem to remember that people knew you could make money a long time ago so i went to look up when youtube was created when it started becoming profitable so in 2005 youtube was created i didn't even know that december 2007 youtube launched the partner program which allowed channels that meet certain metrics to run ads on their videos and earn money doing so okay that makes sense because she came in 2011 and then i saw in the earliest videos some affiliate links that were not disclosed so in my opinion when she reached a certain like number which i'm pretty sure she gained followers quick because she was one of the few beauty youtubers on youtube so you're gonna tell me you didn't get a email it didn't show up on your youtube like thing i don't know what they had back then that said oh here's how to earn or here's how you can earn because you were making a lot of money on views and stuff like that so you're gonna tell me you joined in 2011 without knowing that you could make money i feel like that's a small lie that nobody caught i know you knew that you could make money that and she started in 2011 so in my opinion that little statement was just to sympathize with the audience and say like i wasn't even looking for money just like i said in my other video just be honest just say yes i i like i'm making money i like money i'm doing this so that i can pay my bills like be honest like that don't just pretend like you don't care about your lavish lifestyle you know and then recently to august 17 2023 jen gerard the ceo of gerard cosmetics aired out what she was keeping inside on reddit and stated that Jacqueline tried to ruin her. Jacqueline was paid very generously by my brand. In total from Gerard Cosmetics, she made well over $500,000. She was paid 30% commission plus a royalty for every unit sold from the four shades in the collection. She did not work on the formulas, packaging, branding, or anything else with her collab other than choosing the colors. Wow. And I remember seeing a clip of that video where she was like, I picked, I did all this. I worked so hard. The formulation. Girl, you just picked the colors, girl. Girl, come on. She just picked the colors. They did all the work for you. You had you didn't even have to lift a finger. And I'm very surprised of how much she's getting away with with all these CEOs. 30% commission. I feel like that was never heard of. And royalties. This girl was Jen was being very generous almost like too generous like what like what and then she sent that email wanting more money like i can understand how jen's like what i thought you were my friend now you're gonna say take all my stuff because of this controversy that you weren't you didn't have a problem with 
and the take your name off and I did that's all you wanted hmm but then you the next like after that you still wanted 250,000 just because oh they're gonna associate me with those lippies and I read that email I read was in 2015 on July 31st and she wanted 250,000 to allow her products to still be sold on Gerard Cosmetics or otherwise she didn't want to get into more legal battle but Jen Gerard felt like these were extortion demands um, given that she made that commission you know that was in their contract and that's what she wanted was your name off of it off of it that's it so I am inclined to believe that was an extortion thing so they had a good friendship supposedly so then Jen goes on to say that she helped Jacqueline Hill to build her business despite knowing that it can cost her her own brand significant revenue and both these Marlene and Jen have in common is they were always saying that they just wanted to see another woman succeed another influencer succeed um, and she denied Jacqueline Hill the 250000 and after that Jacqueline Hill made a little snapchat that was vague because Jen Gerard was saying like if you're going to speak you know out my name and try to take me down well you're gonna get sued so the next best thing is to make a snapchat that's very vague with you not saying something but really saying something so that other people can think it's something else without being sued and that's what happened with a snapchat video that was found here on youtube of jacqueline saying like um you can all guess the reasons why i've cut ties with jen gerard gerard cosmetics so that she wouldn't get sued by them but it could be out there and potentially ruin gerard cosmetics uh, marlena also went on that the sesh podcast okay and i believe on september 1st 2023 jacqueline on reddit posted an apology an apology to marlena and jen so i am going to read this supposed apology to De jen and marlena which actually we need an apology for gabby jen marlena and caitlin okay you need to make several apologies but there's also another person that hasn't came up and she's probably done wrong which was nicole guerrero so it says hey jen out of context this sounds awful so i'm sorry if the reasoning behind my email didn't make sense i went through our conversations sharing here for context and the reasoning behind my request was i had noted that if you wanted to continue to use my name and likeness i request an overall buyout versus monthly affiliates as you know i made over six hundred thousand oh i read five hundred thousand she said five, oh so you made six hundred thousand with you through my affiliates creating lip products with you so i was correlating the 250,000 payments with the inventory left over only if you wanted to continue to use my name and likeness i had noted attached that if you went on to sell without my name and likeness then we could separate amicably which is what i also noted i preferred in terms of how we ended you did end up removing my name and likeness in connecting in connection with the products so there was no need for payment we did reach out once as there were active banner ads using my name and likeness years later but that was it in terms of our conversations we find out that that banner and using her whatever is something she gave a i don't know a company a long time ago that happened to have jacqueline on there and did not know they were about to use it again or use it recently so it wasn't like jen was actually trying to promote things with jacqueline on it so then marlena so we skip all the whole like oh yeah you're my friend uh thank you for giving me all the contacts jen um and thank you for trying to help me with my brand but i ended up using information too just to give to morphe and team up with morphe so marlena our last exchange regarding the collaboration is attached up until the end of august 2018 i understood us to be on good terms as you had offered additional collabor collaborations expressed gratitude and noted that scene and noted what seemed to be a positive response for the collaboration not continuing attaching that email i understood from speaking to you that you had got a plan in place for the palettes and shades and wouldn't be an issue moving forward if you had told me then that it would be a brand closing situation we could have made it work but from our phone conversations and emails you wrote after i truly thought it was fine 
how did you truly think it was fine when she sent you pictures of huge boxes of shades that she had purchased like don't you know that costs money and she even said she brought inventory and stuff like that and was persistent in trying to make you sign that contract how did you not think that that would be the end of her also marlena had discussed on the podcast the sesh that she was taking jacqueline to all the i don't know why marlena please pick these people wisely that they're not just using you okay because she took jacqueline to all the people the the businesses the labs all the labs to show her oh you could do it here you could do it there trying to help a friend i know is a fellow friend that well she thought she was a friend of the makeup industry and trying to help another woman start a brand because she didn't have that help and she wanted to help another woman just succeed in this makeup industry and beauty industry only for Jacqueline to blow her off and one day she asked her hey you're coming over here near me we should have some I don't know cup of tea or food and she blew her off only to be working at the lab where she enters with Morphe with linda morphy her and linda morphy enter a lab only for marlena to actually be there at the same time and kind of shocked that she blew her off only to be going around showing a fellow competitor that part of the business to up their business even more and that is an ultimate betrayal of business and friendship how dare she befriend these people only to use them to up someone else and at that another fellow woman who supposedly is for women and all that but yet was stealing their ideas and during this time too Jacqueline Hill stole something that nobody ever noticed but Jen Loves Reviews did get that information from Marlena that they were going to make like a Jaclyn Hill favorites and were in the works of that and because they cut ties she went to Morphe and during the same time Morphe puts up like a favorites thing where you click on it and it shows all the favorites of youtubers or creators and it was just so coincidental so you're getting all this for information which Marlena's team worked on that stuff like that you know technical stuff that you know you gotta pay money for that and Jaclyn was a little bird or fly in Linda Morphe's ear to give her all that information for them to start that up too. So stealing ideas from smaller businesses in order to capitalize and blow them out the water basically. We did continue to work together in 2017 and in 2018. Your team even built a Jaclyn Hills favorite page for your site which continued to be used, utilized for makeup geek sales. I know this from looking over emails and past confirmations I received in regards to affiliate numbers. Girl, is this an apology or is this you trying to bring up evidence to make it seem like they have the issue and you're the victim once again playing the victim card. But see that Jaclyn Hill favorites page? They did have that page first and then cut ties and somehow Morphe came up with the same thing. This should show you that I thought everything was good between us because I continue to support your brand. I can see where that is naive of me to think everything was okay, but hopefully that provides context to you on why I did. Never have deny the relationships you introduced me to and don't plan to. I will say though, I did not work with a lab you think I did in Los Angeles for my lipsticks. Noted that to you when you posted a video saying that you warned me about the lab, but after that text clearing up that I didn't use the lab, you blocked me. For reference, I actually worked with the lab you introduced me to and recommended to me based in Florida for reference okay but that's literally if i was in court like that's not evidence that's you that's hearsay that's you saying something to be true but like you have no evidence to back that up it's just i'm taking you for your word um like okay it's like what you think your opinion so for all we know she's lying like every other lie we have went through and caught on to end of august 2018 i came to you as you gave a statement to a drama channel around our 2015-2016 collaboration. I was under the impression we were on an overall good terms. I'm attaching that quick exchange 
she keeps having quotation marks this is just so long at that point you told me that your words had been twisted but you did have her feelings around me due to our collaboration and me not reaching out as much granted i think you understood why given what i was going through personally but i do admit i a terrible job at being an overall friend to you and many others in my life at that time i've removed a part of that combo but can send you direct given it involved other creators at the end i asked what i could do to make it right and we both agreed we should have had these conversations early years earlier at the time of us not continuing the collaboration or months after when the plan you had in place didn't work out versus two years later i'm sharing a part of that conversation here again happy to share it all direct with you but don't want to share publicly given it involves other creators i shared with you the plan to do a video attached conversation and you shared you're okay with that we seemed on good terms again but then a few days later instead of coming to me to tell me that you that you felt i didn't share things correctly you went to twitter instead okay so that is so long i don't even feel like reading this right now but this whole thing to summarize it up is it's not an apology it's her trying to take things certain things that were said by marlena or jen and then try to back that up with construed things or emails that i feel like not even important and messages are not even important because you're not even proving the things that need to be proved which is you're not a liar the claims of marlena saying the lab you used was one that she um said had issues and we find out that the lab that was on there the oxygen lab was a lab that are had already had issues like you can literally just look it up and find out the issues that they've been having and then that she's a liar and giving false information and which has proven by these documents by just her saying certain things and just recently too where she said oh you know i I was you know poor and I was on food stamps and um, I would go on my lunch breaks and go to Ulta to look at things and people come up to me and say oh you need help but I was so embarrassed like oh please don't I was so embarrassed because I didn't have money to buy things when she said that exact same story at Becca Cosmetics launch of champagne pop but it was Sephora in her mouth not Ulta and then we find out too which is a simple facebook search of when ulta opened up during that time at the city she was at and it said that they opened not even at the same time frame she's claiming all this and i shopped at for years that place that i used to go to my lunch break and couldn't afford Sephora used to give me samples they knew i couldn't afford things there the max store all right and this is when i was physically on food stamps and during my lunch break at Mac, I would walk upstairs in the Chicago Woodfield Mall and I would go into the Alta store and I would just walk around and stay. To point out too, another controversy that has come up is like the whole food stamps thing. I don't know where she got these food stamps or when, but if she was working and if she was married, people are saying that that is impossible. I've been using the James Charles Painted Beauty Sponge. You guys, I already used this once. It is amazing. I do not think enough people are talking about this sponge, actually. Like, everyone's talking about his painted collection, like his eyeliners. But this sponge... All right, so a recent controversy that has popped up while I ended my filming was her promoting James Charles' things. That's why nobody's talking about these products, honey. Read the room. Read the room. This is in a quotation marks alleged predator okay who had a video that said sorry to victims um had multiple people come forward only to be silenced who knows behind the scenes um if money was offered and then they told him hey you can't really sue us because you'll never outlast us why don't you you know take this money you never know what happens um it doesn't mean that these things aren't true just because you aren't convicted so she's into this I don't know promoting problematic people it's like she's doing it on purpose all right so literally a fresh controversy is Jaclyn Hill using her Jaclyn Hill LLC I'm guessing that's where she gets paid like money to from AdSense or something like that but it's hers she owns this and everything has turned up on reddit I swear these people are investigating like I don't understand how she doesn't think like when I lie about something the internet is like searching on every little thing i do and they're gonna be looking for stuff that 
is just not making sense which is this like thing that's popped up about her taking out ppp loans of 300 thousand plus for being american indian or alaskan native okay and they're like oh yes it appears she's a fake native american heritage to score her a three hundred thousand plus loan um people are just like come on off with her head off with her head because of the lies and they're saying she literally just said she was french and belgium in a jacqueline journeys video like what is wrong with her okay then we got this recent update this recent hot tea from kj bennett beauty a person that works in the industry jacqueline hill has allegedly decided not to save her namesake cosmetic brand so he attended some type of makeup uh trade show in new york manufacturer who was, has worked with jacqueline cosmetics told him allegedly former brands is allegedly not moving forward with the brand and that the team working with jacqueline hill in tampa has informed them that jacqueline has chosen not to acquire her namesake brand and revive it so wait let's backtrack according to court documents it's been verified that jacqueline hill has never owned jacqueline cosmetics or even been a partner she owns zero percent of the company is a paid consultant and former brands license her name and likeness for jacqueline cosmetics if i understand this correctly forma allegedly offered jacqueline the option of taking ownership of her namesake brand the brand she still claims to be ceo of that she called a family business and she's turning it down hasn't jacqueline repeatedly said her biggest dream was owning a cosmetics uh, in her name cosmetics company in her name can someone please explain why multimillionaire jacqueline hill is not taking over her over Jacqueline Cosmetics and is okay with former brands letting it die a slow death while well, they continue to dig their way out of bankruptcy. I'm confused. This allegedly news goes against everything Jacqueline has ever said about owning a cosmetics brand. Let's discuss this, folks. Whoa, that was my first time reading this and I'm like, what in the heck? So, once again, um, I think she's not gonna go for this because now Jacqueline Cosmetics is known for just being so controversial her name doesn't really mean anything anymore nobody's like buying how they were from her so there really isn't a like i'm thinking like business and money you know mentality there isn't really a reason why i would even take that deal if i was her either like oh give him back this company that's already dying that nobody's going to want to buy from anymore because of all this stuff that has come out you know so i think she's thinking I'm just going to wipe my hands clean of this brand. Um, just say, hey, had to shut it down because of this and this. Again, just continue to lie. So we'll see how this goes. We'll see if she even tries to bring up another makeup brand. Or maybe she'll disappear off of social media. Maybe she'll find a different route to sell things from like, I don't know, TikTok shop. Some other thing that's going to be in the near future. But it looks like here allegedly she is not going to buy back her the jacqueline hill cosmetics brand um and let it die so we will probably be seeing it shut down pretty soon all this being said we went over the whole entire timeline of her and i can see that from the straight beginning we have had an issue and it seems like she has issues with women and i thought we we're supposed to be empowering women and claiming that oh you know i love to see women win when i feel like going off topic here like the people complain the most my friends complain the most to me about um people making their lives miserable at work is women and then i'm like okay oh my god why can't we just be supportive of each other Jeez, like i oh, i'm just not that type of person um if you're doing stuff if you're getting collabs, if you're, you know, getting basically, I'm happy for you. I'm never jealous. My parents have taught me you don't want what other people want and you lift them up and you be a good friend and and be proud of that and be who you are and be nice and courteous to others. And Jacqueline Hill was anything but a bad friend from all these women that she had to step over. I'm counting Jen, Marlena are the biggest names that come up and they helped her try to create a brand she had almost like what five ceos try to help her with a brand i'm pretty sure you could have did it in less time than five years and i think it was just to gather all the information she could to make a calculated decision which jen does mention in the podcast that she's very calculating in order to say hmm should i open it should i open this brand under me or go with linda and give her all the information to linda so linda and they're at Morphe. They owned 
Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics and it was on the works and it felt like they took out every single one of their competitions that they would have had which would have been Becca closing boom makeup geek closing trying to take down Gerard Cosmetics and they're still surviving they're still there thank god but it just seems like she was trying to take out all her competitors in the very beginning who knows what happened with Nicole Guerrero another person that she had to step over to get this Sigma Beauty collab it all seems plausible that Jaclyn Hill stepped over Nicole Guerrero in order to get this collab and be the first to get that collab and make a good amount of money it's just crazy to me it's just crazy to go through the whole timeline it's just somebody I'm just a regular person just a nobody I feel like I'm just a nobody like nobody would ever pay attention I have no skin in the game none of these people are my friends or do I know them personally but I can tell you right now I was a fan of Jaclyn Hill now I'm not and I don't think she's a girl's girl and I don't think she's supportive of women because of all the track record the timeline we have with supporting documents shows otherwise so Linda Morphy and Morphe knew what they were doing. Then they stepped over Gabby with the whole face master trademark. Couldn't even give her a dime. Um, and then it it lost her money. Can't she do anything about it? She doesn't she feels like she doesn't have enough and now it's just done and done with and it just breaks my heart to think that you can get a trademark and still and still have to just have enough to fight for it because the bigger corporations are trying to bully you. And then we have Kaylin. Who couldn't get a trademark because of the price and then reach out to someone so maybe somebody would have a good heart and be like oh you know what we shouldn't take it i mean they it's a simple easy change um from what i hear it's a simple easy change you could have waited to drop it but nah she just was like ah oh. and only to take these names to take everything and then be like oh nah and now i'm gonna close cozy because i don't want to be known as the blanket girl the sock girl like oh it's just heartbreaking so from this timeline i can see there are many women in her path that she had to take out many controversies that follow and once or twice maybe a coincidence but more than that at every launch at every turn something goes wrong and it's not what i used to think which was like oh they're just trying to pick on her because she has money now no no it's it's her choices her attitude yes she has money but it's almost like she was trying to be relatable now she's not relatable and she only cared about money um and to make it and didn't matter what happened what she did to do it and that was proven once morphe had a bankruptcy and i guess they never thought that that could happen and all the papers had to be released and we find out a huge major lie you can't deny that it's on paper it's on paper it's on court documents that she did not own Jack and Cosmetics. The brand we thought was a family brand. So that was it from the timeline. And I can say that this story reminded me of King Midas and the Golden Touch, but as a curse. So Jacqueline Hill and the Curse of the Midas Touch. Because everything that she did touch turned to gold, but then it quickly went to crap. But it quickly went to crap for the people that she was with around or collaborated with and it just reminded me of that story like the one thing she too wanted i guess was ultimately money and to keep making money but now because she touched everything and it came became gold at a price because of greed now i'm pretty sure she's regretting that regretting the lies that she had made regretting the decisions that ultimately have led her to just decline in views decline in revenue shut down her brands um and ultimately like there is no future and what was that quote we read in the beginning and i'll end it at this one should never be greedy in life because the wish of being greedy does not give fruitful returns in the future it's not giving fruitful returns is it jacqueline and I hope you like this little timeline and little video of cheese men we're talking about. Let me know what you think about this because the timeline shows that this is just a pattern with Jack and Hill. And once or twice, like I said, might be a coincidence. But more than that, that's like a characteristic flaw. A real apology. A real... That was not an apology. Have a real life 
apology if i think if she does come out and admit all the wrongs admit she's lying she was a liar and all that things can happen and be reversed but till then which it doesn't look like she's gonna do i will see a decline and i will probably see more controversies on jacqueline hill's endeavors thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next videos don't forget to check us out on instagram and you have a great rest of your day adios Bye.